ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس واتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما اما بعد ان خير الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد يقول الله عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا كو انفسكم واهلكم نارا الله عز وجل spoke in the Quran and he said to the believers in a command form that you are to save yourself and your family from jahannam from the fire of the hell in another ayah he also subhanahu wa ta'ala said andir ashiratak al aqrabin that warn your close relatives Save yourself, your family members, and your close relatives. The process starts myself first, and then it extends to my family members. Then, upon that, it extends further to a, to a, towards my other relatives. It is not a serial process. I'm not saying that it could be parallel, it could be concurrent. Fact remains, a person has to save themselves first. Upon saving them. they extend the same process to the family members and next to them the today's discussion inshallah will limit itself wa ahlikum to save your family members due to the fact today's society which we live in many of the muslims apparently do not understand what really is going on there honestly speaking speaking to many educated people and otherwise i realize that the the reality of the society the challenges there it is not clear to the people and in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in li waladika alayka haqqa akama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam your children has a right over you and in the hadith of sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said kullukum ra'in kullukum mas'ul an ra'ati kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are in charge of some things among them one your children and you are responsible for them in this dunya therefore you will be accounted for in the other dunya so therefore saving my children it is not optional thing it's not a mustahab it is wajib it's an obligation if that is not the case my children will be bring case against me in day of judgment and anybody else who led them astray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in quran najal huma tahta qadamina liyakuna min al asfalin allah bring them those two group of people from the jinn and insan who misled us so we can humiliate them along with our own selves when they go to jahannam they will take somebody with them and may allah protect us from it so the point here is it is not a passive action and making dua that my children will suddenly come to the world the opposite is true that ali nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma min mawlud illa yulad ala al fitra kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam every birth every child born on the face of the earth except they're born upon fitra in natural state of submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walakin their family their parents take them away from this original path of submission to something else so therefore parents are responsible as well as guilty of the crime for not supporting them their children at the least to be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now many of us as we all have said that brother i'm trying sister say i'm trying brothers and sisters in a very simple logical manner if i explain that to myself 
if I'm a student going to college and I'm taking an exam, keep failing. And if I'm told, try hard, and you say, I'm trying. You, you are not trying enough. It is obvious by looking at the output of your score. You see F, 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 failing in every semester. Therefore, your try is not enough that brought the success to you. Therefore, you're not trying enough. So by very premise I have just established, I can conclude safely that parents today in the Muslim Ummah, in this country and across the globe, are not trying enough because that reflects on the children which are becoming adult today and tomorrow. And because they have a lack of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are bringing us problem among ourselves and the Muslim Ummah. Allah spoke in Surah ar rum Surah number 30, Zahar al-Fasad al-Barru wal-Bakri bima kasabat aydinna. The fasad and the calamities and the problems and, 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 and suffering of the Muslims today across the globe, either on the land or on the sea. This is the output of the action, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or lack of obedience to Allah azza wa jal. And this is a minor, small level of penalty as a taste. So Muslims can see and reflect and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fact remains, no matter what is happening in the Muslim ummah today, most of us not even thinking in that angle. This is not a coincidence. This is a systematic degradation of this Muslim ummah. This is not an overnight thing. This has been happening for years. This ummah been disconnected from the root of la ilaha illallah of this deen, one step at a time, and today they are far away from it. Many Muslims, they think putting them in Saturday school and Sunday school will do the job. It is absurd at the least to say. It makes no logical sense. Impossible. It's seven hours. If I culture a child with philosophy 101, does God exist? God is a created thought or God created human? If I come to this logical, philosophical, deep discussion on a child of seventh grade, I can confuse the mind in one day. One day, not month and years. So having said that, I can confuse a mind in one day, let alone 12 years of school. So our children, most of them go to public school because of the cost and what not. Go to public school and they said, some parents say, I'm making dua, please make dua for us. I feel very sad in this kind of discussion. If I tell you my brother, I will make dua for you, Allah give you risk, do not go to work tomorrow morning. Allah says, End of the day, Allah is the one who gives rest. Period. So whether you're sitting at home, in a plane, or on the basement, you are going to get your food. This is our belief because Allah gives food. Well, like there's some sabab. There's some material aspect of it. There's some effort behind it. So dua doesn't bring the food. Doesn't pay the rent. But effort is put behind this. Likewise, just making dua or hugging them saying fear Allah or in Fridays and Saturdays just taking them to the masjid it is not going to work in most cases why not because the amount of the time in ratio wise they get probably 80 plus percent in the schooling system and maybe 20 percent in home the 20 percent in home either father is busy working overtime our mother may be working if not busy shopping watching television Muslims should be wasting time anyway doing that now a father become an ATM machine, produces dollar. The child needs the money, a car or a sneaker, goes to the father. Father is like a bank, press the button, money comes up. Mother is like a professional babysitter. You need food, I give you food. Did you finish your homework? Yes, I did. How did you get, how much you got in chemistry? 95, good job. This is mother. Either a teacher or a professional babysitter in home. The child has become orphan when both of the parents are physically, biologically living with them. And this is not discharging your responsibilities to the children. They have judgment, you are responsible for the children, and this is by no means enough to protect them from the health. I had a student of my own, and I have met last week another medical doctor just graduated from med school, and he told me, he prayed with me, I know his family, and his father said, pray, pray for childhood, so the child got the ritual of prayer and he honestly told me, I pray because my dad said otherwise you'll be offended. Honestly, I find no meaning in the religion. This is just some words somebody told you, you're telling me kind of thing. Subhanallah, the parents failed miserably 
And I was not surprised by saying this. I would have been surprised if the child said, Alhamdulillah, I love Allah. I fear Allah. I'm conscious about my Lord. If he said that, I'll be surprised. But he said, honestly speaking, I really don't have no feeling for this. It seems like some stories. I'm doing my dad. You'll be offended if I don't. As long as I'm with him, I'm going to continue doing it. I'm not surprised. Another student I spoke to, he said, a Muslim, so-called born Muslim, said that I'm not Muslim anymore. My parents are Muslim. I said, I'm not surprised. They are not. I should talk to your parents first before talking to you. Because the root dictates what kind of fruit comes out of a tree. The root decides that. Root comes to existence much before the fruit. The proper root, proper seed, what you plant on the, on, on the ground, that decision is vital. That's why in this Ummah, when a child is born, he gives Azan to the ear. Little child has no faculty, no intellect, no understanding what are you saying, either in Arabic, or Chinese or Italian doesn't matter. Whatever you say, the child do not understand. So why bother saying it? This is the ritual. But the message is, the moment the child comes to the dunya, from one stage to stage number two, I let the child be clearly understood and known. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest and nothing comes close. So child from childhood, the message is given even though he doesn't understand. This is the ritual in practice. In the Salah, we say Allahu Akbar. Before I come to this business of meeting my Lord, I need to make sure that nothing come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when I say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. My car, my job remains behind because I'm meeting my Lord. The concept, any idea, whether science or otherwise, evolved from a concept. Then it comes to application. When kids are taught in colleges, applications of any material sciences, they are given the formula first, understanding of it, then by extension, they are given application of that. Our children are given the application on the concept. The message of La ilaha illallah is missing. It is totally gone. Now you're putting some rituals around it to them. This is some boring exercise, physical movement. How long can somebody do that? So boring. It means nothing to me. And with the same message, Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum took their life in front. They understood it different. And Allah praised the Masabikun al Awaluna min al Muhajirin al Ansar. Allah praised those people from the Muhajir and Ansar. Why? But they cultured within them. La ilaha illallah. They cultured the value of the Sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But today, we bring into the masjid for a family night. Eat, have fun. They have no idea what are they doing. Who are guilty not giving them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is the parents. They fail to fulfill their responsibility to the children. Father is working two jobs. Nothing wrong with that. But brother, if I'm being honest and upfront with you, every person has limitations, they has 24 hours. And we are human, we weak, full of inside of life. Only weak. After working eight hours, maybe two hours at the least, 10, 11 hours, you do not have much energy left. On the top of that, if you do overtime to make more money, to buy a better car or a bigger house, nothing wrong with that. But what is the cost of it? Anytime you say, what is the cost of it? People say, money is the cost to buy a new house or a new car. I said, that's not the case. You are sacrificing your children to buy the new house and the new car. Everybody obsessed with the material gain. But Allah said, Wallahi yadu'ukum ila dari salam. Allah is calling upon you to a different life. I'm not saying to neglect this life. La tansa nasiba kamina dunya. Do not forget your share of the dunya, but we are taking 100% of the dunya and giving 0% to akhirah. That is a total mismatch. And the output speaks for itself that we are failing miserably. You tell me, Muslim world today, from the east to the west, where we are not suffering wrong. You tell me, at various levels, but we are suffering problems. And it is not a coincidence. Any intelligent mind should sit down and think, what could be the problem? Same Quran, same Sunnah. Sahaba has become successful, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and been certified by Allah and His Prophet. And we are same book, same sunnah. Along with that, we have maybe 30 more tafsir. In addition to that, many explanations of the book of hadith, which they did not have in their time, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. But they become the best of the people, uh, become the worst. Same medication works on one, doesn't work on the other one. There must be some fundamental mistake we are doing. We need to reflect. Allah says, Ayatul Ulil Al-Bab. Whatever you see, 
these things around us, it is a point of reflection. We need to sit down, calm down and think, what is the problem with us? Now Allah is saying, Malakum, what is your problem? Do not come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There must be a problem. And sitting down, laying back, being passive is not one of the options. In your active engagement, sacrifice some of the dunya. You can't get both. Period. You cannot get both. Let me give a simple example. I have students, before the exam, they study some of them 16 hours a day. Sacrifice for a grade. Other students study two hours, go to the cafeteria, play around. No sacrifice, only fun. When the exam is over, the score reflects that. Some of the, somebody works 16 hours a day, studying hard, get an A+. Plus. Somebody two hours, either get an F or D. Their action, whatever they do, their work, the output reflects that. And we are falling far behind. It is important that we think differently today. This is not going to work the way we Another point I'd like to make, how we value success. Allah says in Quran, Rabbana, Hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina furrata ayun. Allah taught us a da'a that Allah make my spouse and my children joy of my eyes. So to us, joy means, in a literal sense, you got 100 in chemistry, in biology you got 99.5, SAT score is perfect score, your GRE is good, you're going to go to the best grad school, you went to med school, these are my joys. My son don't pray. No sadness. It is my joy. Hassan al-Basri Ta'bi, who died, Hijri 110, in Basra, he said that the fear of this ayah, Qurra Ta'un means, joy implies that they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how they understand the ayat and how we understand the ayat. How we translate joy and satisfaction of ourselves and how they translate it. Because they are different in the fundamental, how they think, in a fundamentally different than us and their way of life happened to be different than us. To us, what makes us happy? A lot of money. But to Hibbun al mal Allah said, you love the world. Huh? You love the world. But Rasulullah SAW said, Inna li kulli ummati fitna, fitna ummati mal kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa Every nation has a trial and trial of this ummah as well. Knowing that, even though we need it, we are obsessed with it. Using it as for the need is nothing wrong with that. But that can, being obsessed with that is a major problem. And there is a problem that we gave too much value to the dunya and the material of it and the success of that. Allah and His Prophet become secondary to us. When Allah being the Lord of the universe, Lord of the worlds, owner of the earth and heavens and what is in between that. Allah said, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَمَا تَحْتَ السَّرَى To Him belongs the earth and the heavens. What is between them? What is beneath the earth? That belongs to him. The master of the day of judgment. He is not important to me. So what is important to me? Because of this very nature, we have fundamentally flawed way of thinking. Our children is nothing but an extension of our thought. So today the point is this. I point out many problems that we don't think right. We are responsible for our children. Brothers, many Muslims out loud saying they are not Muslim anymore. Young generation. It's perhaps it is true that many of us, our high schooling was done in another country, therefore our understanding, the process of academic environment in this system is not quite clear. That's why we probably think that they are doing nice and good. That is not the case. Unless you understand how the academic system works, what is the curriculum, what is the syllabus, what is the outline, what is in the book, and what they have been taught, there is no way you can understand what are they going to. I don't blame them. It is tremendous amount of pressure. Just the information, intellectual culturing of the child is so much pressure. In addition to that, you have the peer pressure. And in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Mar'u ala dini khalili Fal-Yanduru ahadukum May you khalil Aw kama qal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam A person is upon the religion of his peers, his friends, his colleagues. So be careful whom you take as your friend. In the school, you cannot walk into the classroom, sit down, I'm not going to take, talk to anybody else. It's not, it doesn't work like this. Being a Muslim in itself, you're already mocked by people. In addition to that, you look different than them. You don't attend their activities. You will be isolated. You can survive like that. So therefore, putting an Islamic school is a must at the least to say. 
at the least to say, and it is not enough. Why not? In Islamic school, as I know many of the principals, they say many children are really quite messed up in the public school by 7, 8, and 9th grade, some into drugs and some of the wild stuff. And the parents lose control. Now they pack them up, shove them into the Islamic school. It takes many years to build a mind, and it takes a few minutes to break it. It's many years to build a structure, a few minutes to take it out. But my humble opinion, that it is much easier, much, much, much easier to produce applied physicists from Princeton than creating one Muslim who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wholeheartedly and obedient to Allah and the Sunnah of Prophet sallallahu It is much more difficult because it is the mind has to be cultured. You can pass an exam by reading, practicing over and over again. But just by practicing over and over again, your heart may not be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This very disconnect takes the salah, make it meaningless. But as salah says, inna salah da tanha alil fa'asha al munkar. Salah is supposed to have some practical implication, some output, some result to it, protect you from something which is bad. But our salah brings no result. Therefore, there's some mistake somewhere down the line. We need to track it backward and find out where is the problem. And there is one at the least to say. So Muslim today, we need to be conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, if you think, if you think naming a child Muhammad is enough, I think we're living in a world far away from reality. The process in these things start from day one. Like the child, you start with Adhan. When a person gets married, Prophet said, since time is short, I'm going to condense and paraphrase the hadith without the text. Prophet said, a woman is married for four reasons. Out of the four, is well, her wealth, her lineage, her uh, name and fame, so on and so forth, and her taqwa. And whoever marries for the sake, sake of taqwa, her piety, her religious manners, that person is successful. The process of selection starts from day one. We start family with La ilaha illallah. A child, akika is a religious thing. This deen, this is a way of life, covers every possible ground they can think about. To us, it is just Ramadan and Eid. And that is why we lost the fundamental connection with the religion. Now I have stated many problems. I give you two minutes to think, then I inshallah I propose some solutions. One of the things as Muslims we must do in the realm of intellect, we connect every child, besides putting them in Islamic school, besides cutting down my work hours. Who doesn't understand if I work less, I have less money, less thing to spend? I mean, this is basic thing, common sense. Who doesn't understand that? But I'm making conscious decision that's losing some money here, living a little cheaper life, but the total outcome end of the day, the sacrifice I'm making today, the result, the benefit this, the child himself or herself, the ummah, the community, and day of judgment, I benefit from them. If you understand this detail, then you say, huh, it's worth making this act. It's worth with sticking with my child, forget everything else, and telling them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is worth the mother, not working both of them. Mother, stay home. Forget the shopping, minimize the shopping. Come to my child. Let me tell you the story of Muad ibn Jabal. Let me tell you the story from early childhood, Ali ibn Abu Talib. Let me talk about Sa'd ibn Abi Qas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. From the childhood, the child grew up with knowing about the companions. And the family of Prophet Sallallahu knows about the sacrifice, conviction, commitment of the people of the past. And the child eager to connect with them. But if the television is on and basketball is running all the time, sometimes it's fine, all the time, then the child's role model become Michael Jordan. Something else. In his mind, what works is Michael Jordan all the time. And Sa'ad ibn Abbas, who is that guy? He's a companion. What is companion? When was it? You ask them, a young child, ask them about Allah and His Prophet, they're silent. Doesn't know anything about Allah and His Prophet. I did that. And Allah speaks about this kind of people in Surah Al-Rum, Surah number 30. Allah says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ مُقَاتِلُونَ They are expert in the matters of the dunya. Worldly matters. In Islam comes, they're jahil, they're ignorant. Can't say a word. Ask them, name me five of the Ansar of the companions. Every Muslim are quiet. Young and old likewise. Why? The basis foundation is missing from generation after generation. We need to connect them. Step number one. Besides putting them in Islamic school, talking to them all the time, day and night, Allah and His Prophet. Give them the good news of paradise and the taste and the flavor of it. And give them the 
fear. Give them the fear of Jahannam and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then bring to the masjid. Bring them close to the people of the knowledge in the culture of the masjid or Islamic center or a youth center. So they are protected, supported, cultured by environment like this. So when they grow up, become strong. Let me give you an example. If you do cement pouring, right? It takes about a few weeks to solidify. Until then, it cannot put any weight on it. It cannot bear any weight. Rather than it has to be supported by sticks, so it doesn't fall apart. But when it is solidified, set, and strong, not only it can bear its own weight, it can support others. When this child has been cultured well, give 15, 16, 18 years, finish the college, by the time parallel education of deen continues from day one until the first, the child become a professor, a medical doctor, regardless, Islamic studies continues. Culturing in the community continues. When the child finish all this, the child is solidified, alhamdulillah. Now this child goes like Muad ibn Jabal. And a sad dinner of cast. Walks in the street, he reflects the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today our child reflects exact opposite of that. What do you expect of this? So what I'm gonna do, beside the physical aspect, the intellectual aspect, which is as Allah speaks in Quran, Surah Ali Imran, Surah number three, verse number one ninety, Allah says, Allah says, In the fee khalki samawati wal ardu waqtilafi lady wa nahar, la ayat in the ulil al bah. Unless you are a scientist, the rotation of the earth, day and night, all the creation of the cosmos, what's so special to reflect? SubhanAllah. A person who can reflect, what would be their conclusion? Rabbana, ma khalakta hadha So, Allah did not create the following. So what's the point? Rabbana, ma khalakta hadha batila, subhanak, bakina adhab al this reflection of the universe makes the person humble, reflects, but tabarakallahu asal al-khaliqin, Allah is the greatest. Look at him, and you humble yourself, then say, Allah, save me from the hellfire. You study physics and biology, if you can make proper connection, you end up seeing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You humble yourself, then you say, Allah, save me from the fire. And Allah said, Kuan fusakum You can get to this point in many different ways. So we need to reflect to your child. His greatness has to be understood. When you say something great, you humble yourself. So this child has to be cultured to them. Bringing them to the masjid. Give them continuous education. Some child said, what my parents going to teach? Tells me, what my parents going to teach? They don't know themselves. They are into bid'ah and shirk. My parents. Some child tell me, my parents, they are going to teach me. They are into shirk and bid'ah and culture. They are lost themselves. They can't teach me. They will confuse me. So therefore, as Allah said, Ku and fusakum, I need to save myself. I need to educate myself. I need to come to the masjid, study, go in the halakas, and go to the durus, and learn, understand it, culture within myself and my family. Again, if I fail to do so, Yom al Qiyamah, believe it, my brother and sister, violation of this obligation in front of Allah will be a serious crime in their judgment. And every Muslim today, is your son, your daughter, but they're Muslim. He's your son, I know, but that's a Muslim man, a Muslim woman there. Prophet ﷺ worked so hard, his companions gave their lives, so the message come to this doorstep. It came, and you are neglecting the rights of your children by not giving the message to them in a proper manner. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path, because without Him, there is no way out. Having said that, we have to give our effort. Brother, what I said, and may Allah forgive my deficiencies, what I said, Whatever deficiencies and weakness I have, this is the weakness of myself from the shaitan. And every word I say, may Allah forgive me, I meant 100% of it. Every word was meant from the bottom of the heart. So please, let us try to take it serious.